Welcome, my name is Ray Lutz, and today we are going to be interviewing uh, Richard Matthews, uh, who's running for State Senate, and we're here in the Porter Ranch. Uh, Richard, nice Good to, to meet you. See you. Now, Richard, uh, tell the uh, audience here about your experience with the Porter Ranch and a little bit about the history and where we are right now. Well, I, I, I'm a lifelong resident of this area. I was born in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, lived most of my life here in Porter Ranch and, and the next door neighborhood Chatsworth. Uh, and uh, we, we've had terrible problems here for many years. We have uh, Santa Susana Field Laboratory where they had a nuclear power meltdown and we've been fighting to uh, have that cleaned up for decades and that fight still goes on. And now we have this uh, gas leak that at its peak was spewing literally a ton of gas per minute. And it's hard to imagine how big a ton of gas is because we don't think of gas yeah, as yeah. having weight. But uh, that's enough gas to fill a small bedroom every second. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and we're now like 10 million seconds into this. So we're at a park here in the, in the Porter Ranch at the very, almost to the top of the ranch. There's some houses behind us. But where, if you can point back, whereabouts was the leak? Oh, well, the leak is uh, right, right back here okay, uh, right behind here. us in, in this was hill it on, behind us. It, on the other side then? You couldn't see it from here? Yeah, the, the hills go up and down. You, you can't actually see the well itself from here. Uh, but uh, th th this is right where it okay. is. And then these houses here are right up uh, against uh, where the uh, gas company's property is. Okay, so now uh, this started October 23rd. <clears throat> That's when they first announced it. Um, and was now this gas it's clear right you can't see it right okay and but they have the what is it called mercapan mercaptain mercaptain added is it added to it so you can yes. smell it and that's one of the things that they were complaining about now at this point this is actually valentine's day today mm -hmm. we're fortunate to be here happy valentine's day to everyone <laughs> now the uh they have announced I believe it was two days ago that they have stopped the spewing of the gas at this point. Is that your understanding? Right. Um, maybe you can talk about what uh, the outlook is for the near future then. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, well, I, I know uh, there's a real-time monitoring of the gas levels at the edge of the property and even after the uh, leak was stopped, they continued to uh, uh, detect uh, the mercaptans and other chemicals over in this area and the methane. Uh, so it, it's slowly dispersing and it, it will be getting better. Uh, the reason the mercaptan is already added is that this gas is not naturally here. This gas is uh, from fracking in the Midwest, in Texas, in places like that, and they ship almost all of our natural gas into uh, California by pipeline. And uh, it, it already has the odorant added for the shipping and then they, they pump it down into the ground for storage that on many days our, our usage of gas is less than what we pipe in and so we just use what we pipe in but uh, at peak usage when we're all running our air conditioners and we need the gas for generating electricity or at night when we're uh, burning a lot of gas uh, for uh, warming homes uh, then that's when uh, uh, they start pulling the, the gas out of the storage uh, to be able to supplement what we are piping in. So I understand, isn't it correct that this at one time was a regular gas well and they extracted, I'm sorry, oil, oil well. well. Yes. They extracted the oil out of the well, it's like a sponge and they pick, it's not a big cavern, right? It's just a, a spongy kind of a uh, rock down there and now they're injecting and pumping this gas down into the well so it's not a naturally occurring situation as you described this is actually not a well per se but actually a storage tank mm -hmm. essentially isn't it yeah they're, they're storing the gas where the oil used to be the uh, wells many of them are, are 60 to 80 years old they were originally drilled as you said for for uh, drilling for oil and uh, the oil ran out in the 60s. They were, the wells were only intended to be used for 20 to 30 years and instead now they're 60 to 80 years old. The gas company is installing new compressors that uh, will extend the life of this facility for another 40 years and, and then we're going to be having 100 year old wells. Now this isn't the first major leak that we've had at this site and if we keep going the way we are going <clears throat> it's not going to be the last and so we need to shut down this facility. We need to reduce our 
natural gas usage to where our peak usage it comes in <clears throat> under what it is that we are shipping in and then we won't need to have this storage at all. Okay, uh, now I understand that this community were they evacuated what, or or what was it what happened here they were this was a, a community that was subjected to this a ton one ton per minute rate that you were talking about at the peak that's amazing this whole community was an affected community what happened to this community then? uh well uh, it, it was not formally evacuated it was a voluntary evacuation a relocation the gas company was paying for people to uh, be able to live elsewhere uh, there are about 100,000 people who live within the five miles of the well that they consider to be the main territory that they uh, were uh, paying for people to relocate. Uh -huh. And uh, they ended up relocating around 20,000 people. So 20% of these neighborhoods, and, and even a higher percentage where we're this close to the well, uh, were <coughs> evacuated as a result of this leak. Okay. Now, um, also, you were telling me wasn't your mother one of the evacuees or she lived up here? No, she, she felt that because uh, she's 88 years old and she wants to stay close to her doctors, she doesn't feel that she really can easily move around and go somewhere else. So, so we stayed in our house in Chatsworth. Okay. Uh, but uh, we uh, applied for and finally, just a couple weeks ago, got uh, an air scrubber system that tries to filter out the uh, organics that are, that are in the air. Okay. Uh, well, and I've heard many other stories about people um, uh, being affected. Uh, is so the main type of gas that they're injecting? It's I've heard that it's methane gas. Is that the type of gas? That the, 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 the natural gas is naturally mainly methane. That that is that's, what we are burning in our gas. our stoves and our furnaces. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> and the methane is lighter than air, and it tends to float high up and float all around the world and cause terrible global warming problems. Methane, uh, depending upon how many years you're looking at, it's 20 to 100 times as potent a greenhouse gas as carbon dioxide. And so this has been a, a terrible climate disaster for what's been happening. But it's the other things that are in it, uh, the methyl mercaptan that is added, and other things that are naturally in the gas, including benzene, toluene, radon, hydrogen sulfide, those are what are causing the health problems. And those are all heavier than air, and they have a tendency to flow down this mountain, come down this canyon, oh. and uh, stay close to the homes. I see. And so that, that's what the real problem has been, ah. has been all this. The, the radon is radioactive. Mm. Uh, its main problem is if it decays while it's in your life. Ah. It has a half-life of 3.8 days, so, so it's a, a very short-term But pollutant. very active. Very uh, active. But then turns into lead and, and creates lead oh. poisoning problems. Uh, and then uh, the benzene is, it will also cause cancers. Toluene causes lung damage and then neurological effects. The methyl mercaptan, short-term, causes all of the symptoms we're hearing about. Tearing of eyes, uh, nausea, headaches. Long term, though, methyl mercaptan is very well known for causing lung damage. And when we have had five months of this disaster, we've had a lot of long term exposure to the mercaptan. Well, uh, before we move on to the next steps, I was noticing uh, we were going to film this down at the, at the school down the street and got kicked out from the police because there's no parking there, unless school hours, which is a strange thing. But uh, there's no parking there. Now, these schools, they're they were shut down when the children moved to another area during the during the uh, main uh, yeah, blow, and, blowout. Yeah, and, and the response there was also slow. It, it was uh, quite some time before the uh, kids got moved out. It was two months. Uh, they moved them out over the Christmas break. Uh, but these two schools that are closest to the site have, have been closed, and, and they, I, I understand, will continue to be closed for the rest of the school year. So we spent. The rest of October, November, and most of December, the time that they were in school, the kids were still here. They didn't evacuate them for several months. Yeah, and we had a time that uh, they attempted to uh, shut off the blowout, 
by pumping fluids down into it and it ended up spitting back out at them and creating what they called an oily mist, which is basically crude oil being spread over all of our homes. And they sent out a reverse 911 call telling everybody, stay in your homes, it's too dangerous to go outside, we don't know what the effect of this will be. But the school stayed in operation and they, they sent the kids home through that oily mist. Uh, uh, and uh, they had further problems. I just with can't that. even believe that. I mean, the, 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 the gas company really has shown incompetence in dealing with this leak. Now, they, they well, really, I, I think they have a lot of expertise in pipelines. They, you know, right. they bring this gas in, they yeah. know the pipelines. The wells for them have mainly just worked, and so they haven't really had well experts. They ended up having to bring in Halliburton to fix it for them. Okay, now I'm just wondering, I was trying to imagine what what is the worst that can happen. Uh, I, I understand that they had to make sure that there was no sparks or, or open flames in the area of this because it's flammable, correct? Right. Um, uh, closest to the well, the gas is so concentrated there's not enough oxygen to burn. And the me levels of methane that they were measuring here at homes were typically around one-tenth of uh, the concentration of what it would take to burn. So it wouldn't be too likely for the valley to catch fire. But somewhere in between there was a zone where it definitely was flammable and they were especially concerned for worker safety as they were trying to put this out that uh, it very easily could have been right And this is a this is the area which is a fire prone area. Right. Uh, we don't want any more fires around here. So, I, I, I had my home evacuated by fires twice in one month at one point. I think it's a natural fire corridor. Uh, the gas company was responsible, I recall, uh, for one of those uh, fires when their power lines were blown down by the heavy winds that we very commonly have in this area. Uh, question. Could it blow up? The, I mean, it's thousands of feet down. Would there be any chance that the mountain could just explode? No, not really, because there's no oxygen down the thousands down of feet down. So the worst that would happen is that we would have a huge fireball at the top. Yeah, right. And, and it would come down the mountain a little ways, but not this far. Yeah, and they considered trying to reduce the uh, climate change effects by turning the methane into carbon dioxide by intentionally lighting a fire and trying to burn off the gas, but they ended up deciding that that was too dangerous. Imagine how big a flame you get if you burn a ton of gas per minute. Oh my God. Uh, it is just, an, it's almost incomprehensible. All right, now uh, let's move on to the next steps. This, it's now shut down. They're moving to trying to seal it with concrete, I understand, and they had mm -hmm. to let that uh, harden. Um, and then uh, we can move on to evaluating who's at fault and, and so forth. But what do you see as any next steps that you can imagine? Yeah, well, like I said, this isn't going to be the last leak if we continue operating as we have. So it's really important that we get it shut down. There's still another hundred wells there, and uh, those wells are, are probably highly eroded because of the practices that they use to use high flow rates. Uh, pulling the gas uh, through those pipes at, at faster than the rates than were intended. Uh, and so what we need to do <clears throat> is reducing our natural gas usage to where we don't need to have the storage. And there are three prongs to how we accomplish that. 25% of this natural gas gets used for generating electricity. So if we greatly increase the incentives that we have had for uh, installing solar panels, we reduce our electricity usage, we reduce our need for the natural gas, and, right. and, and that's a, a big dent that we can make. Second, in addition to those incentives, we need new incentives to replace gas appliances with electric appliances. And if those electric appliances are running off of solar power, then we are able to further reduce our need for gas. About 40% of this gas gets used for heating the air and water in our homes and businesses. So that's a very big dent. We can make. But it, isn't that, uh, isn't a lot of that electricity now being produced from gas-fired uh, power plants? Exactly. That, 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 that first 25% that oh, I was talking about. Okay. So uh, getting the solar power would reduce that rate. And then the third thing is that 16% of this gas is sent to wholesalers who are in faraway places. In Arizona, we've shipped this gas as far away as British Columbia. And we shouldn't be risking our homes for 
supplying gas to them. Uh -huh. They should be doing their own solar programs and programs right. in other renewables so that they don't need our gas. We will stop shipping that out. That's a 16% reduction we can make in, in our peak gas usage and that will greatly uh, relieve uh, our need for the gas and, and shut down this site. As I was researching this, I noticed that a lot of the safety features that used to be required on these type of wells have been disregarded or just let go. In fact, on this well, I think it was 1976 when the safety valve last was operable. The, the safety valve was installed in 76 oh. and it was removed in 79. <laughs> Three years. Uh, the safety valve most likely would have shut this down instantly and really? we wouldn't have okay. had any blowout at all. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, the gas company wanted to have high flow rates and the, the sh safety valves are designed to shut down automatically if too much gas flows and it got to be inconvenient. The valves were shutting off and they weren't in intended to. Okay. According to a, a, a petroleum engineer who used to work for our regulatory agency, Dogger. And yeah. so they took out all of the safety wells, safety oh. valves, not just the one on this well. Oh. And operated for all of these years without the safety so valves. If they put the safety valves back in now, that would make it safer to operate but they wouldn't be able to have the flow rates that they want. Uh -huh. the, the new compressors that they are adding and spending millions of dollars on wouldn't do them any good because they couldn't uh, flow the gas at those high rates. So this is a profit versus safety where they've just disregarded safety to maximize profits. And no one is there. The regulatory agencies seem to be completely uh, on vacation on this. They're not paying attention or in bed with the petroleum and the energy companies saying, yeah, go ahead and maximize profits. We don't care about that. And, and actually, we have written into our law that our regulatory agency, Dogger, is required to work to maximize the amount of oil and gas that gets extracted. Oh, okay. We need to change that law. We should not be promoting oil and gas. The gas and oil companies are quite capable of promoting themselves. We should reverse that law and make it that it is Dogger's duty to try to conserve and therefore to minimize the amount of extraction. <laughs> okay, good point. All right, so uh, now one more thing. I understand you were involved in a petition with uh, either, what was this petition? Well, f first we fought to have uh, the governor declare a state disaster area, and he eventually did that. Uh, unfortunately, some of our local electeds have fought against that. Uh, they were afraid it would affect property values, but our property values went to zero because the uh, the banks wow. said that they would not write any loans for any houses in this area, and everything fell out of escrow. So with house, housing prices effectively at zero, we couldn't have done any more damage. But we finally convinced the governor, we got that disaster declaration, but we need a national disaster declaration. And even with it shut down, we still need that disaster declaration because the uh, homes here that lost things because of the uh, leak and businesses with 20 percent of the people evacuated the local businesses have greatly hurting. suffered they have had losses a federal disaster declaration will give them tax deductions and be able to help people recover from this and so we need to get that disaster declaration we've already got 1500 signatures on that petition okay. uh, other groups have also been collecting and have many so more signatures and, and you sure you, you can find on. that petition excuse me that petition on my website at voterichard.org. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Richard. Uh, I think we've covered most of the bases on thank this. Thank you. And now we'll get this information out to as many people as possible so they can understand the issue. Thanks. It's good talking to you. Thank you.